Do you want to look really good? Do you want to have visible abs? Do you want to look at yourself in the mirror and feel really good about yourself? Because we're talking about adding years to your life. We're talking about finally looking in a mirror and actually being happy with yourself. You know, massive, massive things in our lives. Hi guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing good. So today we're going to talk about how to get started on your health and fitness journey. Uh, this is primarily focused on us middle-aged people, but you can apply it to anyone. But uh, yeah, I got back into shape in my middle age. I'd previously been in very good shape when I was younger, then got really, really unfit during lockdown, put on a lot of weight, and uh, now I'm back in the in the realm of having visible abs again and having a, a, a lean healthy body and uh, able to lift some decent weights in the gym so i just want to detail you know how i went about doing that because actually the hardest part of that is taking the step in the first place to get started most people that are watching this video will probably be thinking about taking that step that's the easy part right you know we've all watched fitness videos we enjoy watching those like motivational videos showing people going through these changes and these journeys and we kind of live vicariously through that and we watch them and think oh yeah i'm going to do that i'm going to do that and sometimes if you're not careful you can actually get stuck in that cycle you know for the rest of your life and you never actually make the leap to do it so how do you make that leap and where do you even start so the bottom line is you make the leap by just leaping like the worst thing you can do to yourself is to say i'm gonna get fit i'm gonna do that soon or i'm gonna get fit next month i'm gonna do x and y and z forget that think to yourself i'm gonna get fit and then start doing things about it immediately and i don't mean like get off you know jump off the chair and run to a gym I mean, start being proactive immediately and there's some steps you can take because there's a bit of organisation involved and if you get organised, then it's a lot easier to, to go on this fitness journey than what it is to just sort of blindly run out the door with a pair of trainers on and, and try and uh, run up the road. You know, that's, that's probably going to end up with you being injured uh, or you just being miserable and not wanting to do it anymore. So what are the steps? What, what do we do? So the first thing you've got to do is work out what you're going to need to go on this journey. Now, that's going to depend. If you're taking up a specific sport and that's your route to fitness, if you're you know, going to be a road cyclist or you're going to be a runner or whatever it is, then you're going to need to look into the specifics of that sport. That's not something I'm going to get into. I'm talking about people going down the gym and getting generally fit and maybe building some muscle tissue and getting a bit leaner, getting generally healthy. So what do we need to do that? Well, firstly, we need a gym, and that's going to be an important one. The best possible thing to do is to find a good local gym. I realise that not everyone can go to a gym. You know, they might not have one in their area. Um, if that's the case, I've got a video uh, on here about how to get around that and train at home and that basically involves buying an incline bench not cheaping out on it buying a decent incline bench spending two or three hundred pounds on that buying several sets of dumbbells that are going to give you a nice range of weights so you can do a number of different exercises and then there's a, a workout that you can do at home if you want to do that i think it's in the members section which is like two pound a month you can join for a month get all the information and then opt out it's cost you two pounds so no big deal anyway join a gym find what what's good locally i would suggest that you go and visit a few different gyms so if you're making the decision like let's say you're making this decision tonight get on the phone ring the gyms most of them are going to be open late into the evening start ringing them tonight organize to go tomorrow let's say tomorrow's saturday organize to go tomorrow morning Tomorrow's a work day, Monday, doesn't matter. Organise to go tomorrow evening. As soon as you can get in them, go and visit them. Take your gym clothes with you. Have a, a free session in there. Get the, the guy to show you around and, and do a bit of free training. Most of them will offer like a sort of free 
um, PT showing you around the machines etc so take them up on that get some free training while you're there you've just made the first step you've actually taken that first step just by doing that so that's a big step and and that's the important bit you know to get over that sitting there thinking about it and to get out and actually do it what else can we do the other thing I would do straight away is to start planning your diet out so again I've got videos in the uh, on the lifestyle playlist here that detailed diet if you look in the um, I think it's uh, fitness industry lies video that I've done uh, you can find a full diet in the um, description on that video and uh, I detail uh, cooking some of that diet in, as well in in that section so you can find it there again if you become a member two pound I do like a, a really um, intense bit on the diet and I list that in full and I'll even send you the diet in in word format if you so wish so plan your diet you don't have to do mine there's plenty of other decent diets online for you know people that just want to get generally lean build a bit of muscle tissue look good get fit there's all sorts of information out there I would strongly suggest that you just do a good sensible varied diet that's a relatively high protein diet I wouldn't go for anything wacky I completely avoid all these sort of crazy diets of like carnivore or hardcore whatever it is keto gen genesis or whatever the the craziness is of that diet some of them have got um, uses further down the line when you get a bit more accustomed to all this stuff but they're not good things to get started with so I would just recommend a really healthy high protein diet and really limit your processed foods you know try and cut them out entirely and limit alcohol certainly um, I would cut that back to like once a month or none I do none so once you've got your diet planned Go and buy some Tupperware or order it on Amazon. I'll stick a link down below to the stuff I use. It's, it's relatively cheap. But that will enable you to get organised with your food. Because then you want to, the next day that you've decided all this, get to a supermarket, start buying the food that you've found that you're going to cook for your diet. Make sure this is something that you're able to stick with over a period of time, which is another reason to avoid those crazy diets you know of like just eat meat or just eat veg or whatever it is remember this is something you're going to be doing for like a year and then onwards it's not something you're going to be doing for a few days and then reverting back again so you need to know that you can you can manage to to stick with it get some Tupperware and buy a pair of scales that are half decent uh, digital scales that you can use in the kitchen then you can start weighing out your food because once you start on this fitness journey of trying to build some muscle and lose some body fat you're going to find down the road that you want to adjust things a little bit in your diet because you may want to you know add some more calories to build a bit more muscle or you might not be losing fat at the rate that you want to so you need to take some calories away and the only way to do that is to know what you're intaking every day and then be able to change it and the only way you can do that is by weighing your portions out it's a bit of a responsibility but look I do this stuff every day it's no big deal uh, in the end it just becomes second nature and it comes down to how much do you want it or not do you want to look really good do you want to have visible abs do you want to look at yourself in the mirror and feel really good about yourself if you do then it's going to take you an extra half an hour or so of responsibility for your diet every day and if you don't want to take that responsibility you're not ever going to look really good so that's the trade-off you, you make the decision but don't complain to people that you're overweight and you haven't got any abs if you can't be bothered to dedicate half an hour a day to, to sorting your diet out so when you go shopping my advice would be do not buy any junk so like there's nothing wrong with having a cheat meal once a week you know I advocate that I do that every Friday I have a cheat meal um, you know a burger and chips and a bit of dessert or whatever but what I don't do is keep that in the cupboards all week and it's an absolutely killer idea to like think oh on Friday I'll have some biscuits and whatever and then you buy them on the Monday and think that you're going to leave them in the cupboard and eat them on the Friday I'm telling you it, they will just be on your mind you know Tuesday night Wednesday night Thursday night you'll be doing nothing but thinking about those biscuits in that cupboard and 
you'd be amazed at you know how how that pecks away at your brain until in the end you'll just succumb to it and you'll go and gorge on those biscuits so keep it out the house that way the first three or four weeks when you you know your willpower might be lacking a little bit um, and you get really tempted then you would have to actually go down the shop and go out into the freezing cold at 10 o'clock at night to go and buy yourself a packet of biscuits. Normally we won't do that because it's actually embarrassing to sort of drag ourselves down the shop just because we're so addicted to food that we've got to go and buy a packet of biscuits at 10 o'clock at night. That's normally embarrassing enough to us that we wouldn't do it to ourselves. So that's kind of a good way of preventing yourself from eating that kind of junk. Then I would say stick to your exercise plan no matter what you know you you've got your exercise plan written down and you're going to stick to that you know if it says that you do chest on a monday that's what you're going to do and stop worrying about everyone else you know there will be people in your life that go oh but on monday i want you to come out here and oh but on monday i wanted you to do this and it doesn't matter you just tell them look this is the most important thing i'm doing in my life I'm giving myself longer to live. I'm giving myself the body that I've always dreamt about and always wanted. And unless someone's dying, I'm not going to be there. You know, I'm going to be doing what I need to do between six and seven or, or, or whatever time it is on whatever night you've chosen. They're sacrosanct. They're not going anywhere. And I don't care what anyone says to me. You know, people have rang me up. Oh, but we're having a party. Oh, but, they, oh, but you could train on a different night. No, not going to happen. I train on that night that I've said I'm going to train. And the only time I change that is if I have to go away for work. And even then, I try and train when I go away for work. I just do it in the hotel gym or whatever it is. But um, I would seriously not change that. And maybe plot into that. Every eight weeks, you're going to take a week off something like that because there's absolutely nothing wrong with having a break from the gym and giving your body a rest but make sure that's a planned break because again psychology wise the worst thing you can do is like having those biscuits in the cupboard that are calling your name if you just start giving yourself time off whenever you feel like it that day will turn into two days and that two days will turn into the rest of the week and that rest of the week will turn into another week. And before you know it, you haven't been into the gym for a month. And now you're back to square one again. And then it becomes really, really difficult to get back down the gym. You know, you lose that motivation. You set yourself back. You feel bad about yourself. And you, you don't have that motivation to get back down the gym. So don't let that happen. Get down the gym no matter what and only take the time off when you've set that time aside for yourself. You know, you've written that into the schedule. Right, now it's my week off the gym. I'm going to take it off. Then you're straight back again the next Monday. Doesn't matter what anyone else says. Don't listen to them. Same with diet. There will be people around you that say, don't bother with that diet. You know, come out with me and have a cheeseburger or whatever. That's because they feel bad about what they're eating. And they actually don't want you to eat well because it makes them feel bad. Ignore them, you know, and explain to them how important this is to you. And if they truly are your friends, they'll support you. If they truly love you as family members, they'll support you. If they're not going to support you, then you probably want to think about having some different people around you because they're not worth having around you if they're not going to support those kind of choices. Because we're talking about adding years to your life. We're talking about finally looking in a mirror and actually being happy with yourself. You know, massive, massive things in our lives. We should all be able to be happy with what we see in the mirror looking back at us. And if you're not and you want to do something about it, don't let anyone stop you from doing that. And why on earth would they want to? You know, that cut those people out immediately if, if that's what they're going to do. So have an understanding that this is going to take time. You know, it's not days. It's not a few weeks. This is like months that you're going to have results in. So set some goals, but over a sensible time scale. Because I've heard a lot of people, you know, they train for like three days. I've, I've had it with people on here, you know, that we've been training for like a week. Um, they've got into the diet plan and the training and whatever. And they've come back to me and they said, well, I'm, I haven't seen my arms get any bigger. 
and I'm like, how long have you been training for? Three days. Yeah, you won't see your arms get any bigger. It's been three days, man. So this is months, not, you know, the, the keys to this stuff are diet. You know, it's like 70% diet. You're training, you know, it's like eight, uh, another 20% of it is, is your training and how much effort you make in that training. And then the rest of that equation is the consistency that you have with both of those that you need to just repeat, 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 repeat. And that's a difficult thing for people, you know, because no one likes to repetitively do things that don't appear to be giving them huge rewards overnight. We all like that quick dopamine hit. We want to go down the gym, have a nice pat on the head from someone. Suddenly our muscles all grow overnight and we think, yep, yeah, I've done the work. Now I've been paid for it. You know, that's what people want. They want that, like, or at the end of the week, I've done a week's work, where's my pay? Well, it's going to take you six months to get paid, noticeably. You'll feel a bit better after a week. You might feel a bit stronger after a week. You might feel a bit more capable at lifting weights after a week, but you're not going to be visi visibly much different after a week. After a month, you might start seeing some really small changes. After six months, you should see some very noticeable changes. If you hadn't seen one of your family members and you trained like I prescribe you to train for six months and you diet like I prescribe you to diet for six months, when you next see that family member, they will be absolutely shocked. They'll be blown away. That's the kind of change I'm talking about. So when you set these goals, when you achieve them, set new goals because there's nothing worse for your morale than to hit these goals and then go, right, where do I go from here? You know, we've, we've all heard um, like Tyson Fury, um, it happened to him and a lot of the top boxers, in fact, when they became world champions, they sort of spiralled out of control after that or they spiralled down into depression because they had achieved their lifelong goal, they'd got where they wanted and now they're just wandering aimlessly. And as the old saying goes, you know, the devil makes work for idle hands. If you don't have a goal and you're not heading towards something, you're just going to drift around aimlessly. You're going to fall out of love with exercise. You're going to fall out of love with going to the gym. And before you know it, you'll be sitting at home eating some Pringles and you won't be lifting any weights and you won't be doing any gym work. And six months down the line, you'll be back in the same shape you were when you started. And the whole point of this is to keep the shape we're in. So let's say your first goal is to, you know, get to X body weight. You're going to lose X amount. Great. Get there. Then set yourself another goal. That could be like to gain some muscle tissue. Or it could be to get X amount stronger. Or it could be to get X amount faster at doing your running or cycling or whatever it is. You might be training, you know, to do canoeing or whatever sport you're training for to get better at. Set a goal for that. When you hit that goal, aim higher, you know, and there's nothing to stop you changing that to really good goals. You know, I've had I've set myself goals in the past that seemed unattainable, but gradually you work up to them and eventually you know, you, you can attain a lot more than you think you can. Um, I would have never dreamt when I first started training that I would pull 300 kilos, but I used to deadlift 300 kilos after a while, and that was pretty regular. I would never have dreamt I could squat 300 kilos, but I could, you know, and uh, I certainly wouldn't have thought I could do that in the beginning. I probably couldn't do it now. I'm a little bit old, but I'm still setting goals to get myself up there. My goals now are to get heavy weights without being injured so I've had to adjust my goals based on my age um, but that doesn't matter you know you, you still must set yourself some some really good goals that you want to achieve and last of all um, we're going back to the consistency thing again when you've got all this in place don't ever let it slip and you know one of the cardinal sins is like, oh, I can't be bothered to go shopping tonight. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll go to work tomorrow and I'll just pop in the local shop and buy a sandwich or something and then I'll go shopping when I get in. Look, that, that's a killer idea. You're never going to find anything healthy at the shop. You're going to end up eating a bunch of junk 
and it's the same thing as kind of letting the training slip as soon as you start letting these things slip that creeps back in and creeps back in because we're always looking for those shortcuts and if you can duck out of the responsibility of going food shopping and cooking all that food and taking that responsibility and time to prepare it all you know then you will start doing that on a regular basis and once you do that you'll find that oh i've been eating ham sandwiches and mars bars and meal deals from tesco's for the last week at work and funnily enough you know i've stopped losing body fat or whatever and uh, i'm not gaining my lean muscle and then you get home in the evening you've eaten a load of junk you probably now you know you've had a sort of uh, shot your insulin levels sky high you're having a sugar crash and uh, you're going to get home you're going to crave some junky carbs again and you probably can't be bothered to go shopping so now you're going to get a pizza and stick that in the oven and we're way back to square one so all this stuff we can see it will always lead back to like the worst denominator you know your default setting is always going to lead you back to eating junk sitting around on a sofa not going to the gym you know you've got to know that those are your default settings it, it's the default setting for all human beings we all want to laze about we all want to eat junk food because that's the best way to conserve energy and that's the best way to get energy is to eat high calorie food so that's hardwired into us you know it's evolutionary that we are hardwired to seek out very high calorie foods and gorge on them and then we're hardwired to do as little work as possible to conserve those calories because back in the day you might have to survive for two or three months with very little food in the middle of winter and all you've got is a handful of berries or whatever so if you had a stack of body fat on you you could get through that time you know with uh, the minimal outlay of uh, um, calories you know you wouldn't just burn them off randomly running around for no apparent reason so the people that survived those very tough times hundreds and thousands of years ago were people that were very good at gorging on high calorie meals and conserving as much energy as possible when they didn't need to use energy don't let that happen now because neither of those things are uh, useful to us now we live in a place that's abundance of food we've got all the luxuries around us that we need so there's no need to like conserve that energy there's no need to gorge on high calorie food you know that tomorrow you're not going to be freezing to death you know clutching a handful of berries you're going to be in a centrally heated house probably and you've got the supermarket just down the road you've got to imagine yourself as multiple people right and there's one person that's making really sensible decisions that's the person that says i need to get fit i'm gonna get i'm gonna lose weight i can't go on like this that's the sensible guy in you then there's gonna be another guy that says well yeah you know you probably do need to lose a bit of weight but hey you don't need to go mad about it so already you've got this other personality that's kind of playing tricks and and wants you to pull back a bit and then you love like another personality still that nags at you especially on days you're feeling a bit rubbish and that will be saying forget all this go and get yourself a bottle of wine and a hot water bottle and you know uh, go and put a burger in the oven and then sit back watch tv and just chill out man and, and, and forget all that stuff that's for younger people you don't want to worry about that uh, you know just relax you've earned it you've earned this relaxing time in life and just give yourself a reward don't listen to that person because you always have to remember that personality will end up with you long term feeling like junk you know you will look in the mirror you won't like what you see you will feel depressed you won't feel like you're getting anywhere in life you'll feel lack of motivation your hormones will be through the floor because you're not eating the right things you're not getting the right level of exercise so that personality saying oh you should reward yourself you deserve it you know just chill out man and leave that all to the younger kids ultimately that personality is driving you towards choices that lead to depression and, and kind of self-loathing listen to the first personality the sensible one the one that's telling you get fit don't listen to the other ones thanks a lot for listening guys i hope that uh, helped you to sort of get yourselves motivated and take that really difficult first step towards getting in shape um, that is the hardest part believe me the second hardest part is actually keeping it up for the first like three weeks once you get over that hump that first three weeks or so then you'll find you just get into the routine the cooking is all down you'll start um you know 
doing all that stuff second nature and you'll you'll forget that you ever used to binge on junk food and and that will seem like a lifetime away so just get that three or four weeks under your belt and you'll be cruising from then on and i guarantee you in a few months time you'll look in the mirror and you'll love what you see and you'll feel super happy you'll be waking up in the morning full of motivation and enjoying life again you know uh, and and that's one of the things i've noticed i love life again so I, I would love to see other people experience that as well. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great weekend. Take care.